The Ames test for mutagenicity tests for the potential of a compound to be carcinogenic or mutagenic. For our purposes, we assume carcinogenicity and mutagenicity to be very similar. The bacteria you plate are histidine minus oxytrophs. This means that they have a mutation in the biosynthetic pathway for making their own histidine, so they cannot grow on minimal medium unless it is supplemented with histidine so that they can take it up from their environment. Remember, oxytrophs have a forward mutation, prototrophs are wild type and can synthesize all of their essential amino acids so they can grow on minimal medium. The setup of the Ames test has four different plates. There are two control plates and two experimental plates. We will go over the purpose of these plates in a few slides. It's important to realize that the Ames test uses a selection to select for reverse mutants. The His minus oxytrophs are plated on His minus medium. So that means the only bacteria that can grow are the His plus reverse mutants or revertants. This is a selection for the His plus revertants, the bacteria that started as His minus oxytrophs and became prototrophs via reverse mutation. Different results reveal properties of the compound. The experimental setup of the Ames test consists of four different plates. Plate A is a control plate with His minus bacteria, the oxytrophs, on the His minus medium. This plate shows the spontaneous rate of reverse mutation. Remember, there's a normal spontaneous mutation. There's one mutation in every 100 million base pairs. There's slipped mispairing, trinucleotide repeat expansion or contraction. This reverse mutation from His- minus to His+, plus allows them to synthesize their own histidine and thus can survive in the His- minus medium. Plate B has the compound in addition to the His minus bacteria and the His minus medium. This plate shows the mutagenic properties of the parent compound. Plate C is another control plate. You have the rat liver enzyme plus His minus bacteria in His minus medium. The purpose of rat liver enzyme is to simulate the human body. Bacteria don't have enzymes that can change the compound, and humans do. So rat liver homogenate is used to simulate the human body. Rate of reverse mutation should not be affected because the enzymes of the liver do not increase the rate of reverse mutation. Plate D models the activity of the compound in our body once it's metabolized. Now we will walk through three different scenarios and each scenario will... We performed the Ames test on compound X. On plate A, there are five colonies. On plate B, there are five colonies. On plate C, there are five colonies. And on plate D, there are 75 colonies. Let's walk through our results one plate at a time to see what each plate tells us. On plate A, the five colonies describe the random, spontaneous, or background rate of reverse mutation. Remember, this is explained by normal errors in DNA replication. The five colonies on plate B in the presence of compound X shows that the compound, at least in its parent form, doesn't have mutagenic properties since it has the same rate of spontaneous mutation. On plate C, the addition of rat liver enzymes is the other control to ensure that the enzymes on their own don't produce a mutagen in the absence of the compound. Remember, the rat liver homogenate or rat liver enzyme is used to simulate the human liver enzyme. On plate D, the 75 colonies seen in the presence of the rat liver enzymes plus the compound indicates that after the compound is metabolized by liver enzymes, a metabolite is formed that does have mutagenic properties. The rate of reverse mutation is much greater when the compound is metabolized. These results indicate that the compound is pro-mutagenic. That means that the parent form of the compound, before it is metabolized by liver enzymes, is non-mutagenic. Compare plates A and B. 
but once it is metabolized by the liver, it becomes activated and is mutagenic. It causes a greater rate of reverse mutation as compared to the spontaneous rate. An example of a promutagen or procarcinogen is benzoapyrene, a compound found in charred foods. The parent molecule is harmless, but once it is metabolized by liver enzymes, it becomes a highly reactive intermediate that can covalently bind DNA and lead to greater rate of mutation. Our results indicated a non-mutagenic parent form mutagenic metabolite. Fortunately, most of the time our liver detoxifies and inactivates harmful compounds. How would we explain the results of this Ames test in scenario 2? On plate A, there's 5 colonies, plate B, 75 colonies, plate C, 5 colonies, and plate D, 5 colonies. Let's try to answer some questions. First, what is the genotype or phenotype of the bacteria before they're plated? The answer would be his minus oxytrophs. These bacteria can't synthesize their own histidine and can only grow on medium supplemented with histidine. Number two, is this a screen or selection? And this kind of goes with number three. Are we looking for oxytrophs or prototrophs, forward or reverse mutations? This is a selection for prototrophs. We're looking for the his minus oxytrophs that had a reverse mutation so that they became his plus prototrophs and are now able to grow on the his minus medium. Plate A has five colonies, which shows the spontaneous rate of mutation. Plate B has 75 colonies, which is a much greater rate than the spontaneous rate of reverse mutation. The parent form of the compound is carcinogenic. Plate C is the control plate, which shows the rat liver enzymes are not mutagenic. And then plate D shows that the liver enzymes inactivate the compound so that its metabolite is non-mutagenic. Now let's look at some application questions. Should compound Y in scenario 2 be a concern for bacteria? How about for humans? Is it completely safe? It should be a concern for bacteria because they don't have liver enzymes that inactivate the mutagenic parent compound. But it should not be a concern to most humans because our liver enzymes will inactivate the mutagen into a harmless metabolite. However, not all humans are safe. Genetics and environment are important factors that cause individual variation in susceptibility. People may be born with genetic metabolic deficiencies or they may acquire liver disease, for example, from chronic alcoholism, or take drugs that compromise the normal function of the enzymes that inactivate the mutagen. Let's look at our previous compound, compound X in scenario 1. Should it be a concern for bacteria? How about for humans? It shouldn't be a concern to bacteria because they don't have liver enzymes that activate the non-mutagenic parent compound. But it should be a concern to most humans because our liver enzymes will activate the promutagen into a harmful metabolite. However, some humans may be safe depending on their liver enzyme physiology. Perhaps those who have a compromised liver function will be protected from this mutagen as they will have less of the harmful metabolite and more of the parent compound. Let's look at our final scenario. On plate A, there are five colonies, plate B, zero colonies, plate C, five colonies, and plate D, zero colonies. These results indicate that the compound decreases the rate of spontaneous reverse mutation, both in its parent and metabolite form. Perhaps it helps with DNA repair mechanisms. Now, this compound may exist, I'm not sure, so it may be hypothetical. Let's do a recap of the Ames test. We start with his minus oxytrophs, which can't synthesize their own histidine and must take it up from their environment. This is called supplementation. We are looking for the mutagenic properties of a mystery compound. We evaluate that by comparing the rate of reverse mutation from his minus oxytrophs to his plus prototrophs. And these prototrophs can grow on his minus medium. This is a selection for the reverse mutants. Plate A is a control plate 
that shows the spontaneous rate of reverse mutation with just the His minus bacteria in the His minus medium. There should be very few colonies. Plate B is an experimental plate that shows the mutagenic properties of the parent compound. Plate C is another control plate that shows the activity of the rat liver enzymes. It should show that the enzymes don't increase the rate of reverse mutation. The purpose of this plate is to simulate the liver enzymes in the human body. Plate D, aka what will happen to the compound after it is metabolized, so the effect of the metabolite. There are four different potential results. So the first one is all four plates have the same number of colonies, and that means the parent is harmless and so is the metabolite. Another possibility is that there's a harmless parent compound, but the metabolite is mutagenic. Scenario 1, where plate D has a lot of colonies and plate A and C show spontaneous rate of reverse mutation. Another possibility is a mutagenic parent and a harmless metabolite, like in scenario 2. Plate B would have a lot of colonies, but plates A, C, and D would show a spontaneous rate. Finally, a hypothetical, it repairs the spontaneous rate of reverse mutation. A and C would show the spontaneous rate, while plates B and D would have no colony. Thank you for watching this video on the AIMS test.